Welcome. In this video, we're going to do a solo playthrough of Spirit Island, showing you how to set the game up and the basics of how to play. So down at the table, this is a cooperative or solo game in which we are going to take over the roles of spirits trying to protect the island from invaders. These invaders come in the forms of explorers, towns, and cities. And we will win the game by keeping those in check. We will lose the game in one of three ways, one being if we get too much blight spread on our island, if our spirit is defeated and we have no presence tokens on the map, or if we take too long and when we go to draw an invader card, we have none to draw from. So for setup, let's go ahead and take a look at the invader board. On our board, we can keep track of our fear here. So you can see we get four fear per player. And we'll create our fear pool here. And as the game progresses, as we create fear, we'll move that down. And every time we take all the fear out of our fear pool into here, we will flip another card in the fear stack. Over here, we can keep track of our current win condition. So victory conditions at tier level one, we need to have all of the invaders removed from the board. As we progress down this, we can win if we have all the buildings out of play or all the city buildings. If we get down to here, instant victory. So to set this fear track up, we'll take all our fear cards, give it a shuffle. Then we're gonna get nine of these cards and we'll separate that. We're gonna take three to put there. Then we're going to put level three on top of that. Three more cards. Level two on top of that. And then three more cards. So right now, that is our wing condition. Once we go through these three cards, we'll move this over for our new victory condition. And that'll get better as we go through and spread fear on our island. These go back to the box. For Blight, we can use what's on the board. I'm going through the very basic for this playthrough. Uh, we do have some other options using the Healthy Island. You'll pick one of these to put there. And when all the Blight is taken off this, you'll flip it over and you'll have different effects. So we're just going with a basic board, which is five Blight per player it goes on here. And if there's ever no Blight here, we lose the game. So we'll set five tokens on there since we're playing with one Spirit. Then we want to create our invader deck. So we've got cards with three, two, and one on them. And basically from the base game, we'll go through here and just remove one, but we want five cards for level three. Then we want four cards from level two, so we'll remove one. And then three cards from level one. And so throughout the game, if we ever go to draw a card from here in camp, that's another lose condition. So that's the one we removed. We'll put these three on there. These will go back to the box. And the rest of these spaces are once we earn fewer cards, we'll put them here. And then after we play them, create a discard pile. As the game progresses, these will be flipping over for build, ravaging, and discard pile. Also goes through letting us know when we destroy a town, we generate one fear, we destroy a city, we generate two. And we also have the phases of the game listed here. So spirit phase with growth, gain energy, choose and pay for powers, fast powers, then the invader phase, slow powers, and then time passes. Then for island setup and our character, for our island, we're just gonna take one per spirit. So we'll just grab this one here. So it has different areas for different land types and lets us know what gets put on that for starting. So we get Dahan with that symbol, cities with that symbol, blight with that symbol and town there. So we'll go ahead and set that up. And these basically represent the natives in the area. And then our starting blight, which does not come from the invader board. And a town and a city. Then for our spirit, we're gonna look on the back, look at our setup. 
So we put three influence on our starting board, two in the highest numbered mountain. So we find our mountain land over here. So it's the highest number, we put two there. Then one in the highest number jungle. So we've got a one and four. And this just shows our play style. Powerful but slow, has potent power cards and an excellent energy and income. It starts with only one card play per turn and growth is limited to adding one presence per turn. Also slow to change, learning new powers carries slightly more cost than reclaiming played power cards. Complexity is low, so I'm not so sure this is gonna be a good solo. He's great at defense, but he's gonna be slow at causing fear. Offense is kinda of low control and utility, but we're gonna give it a shot here. And on this side, for our beginning phases, growth, we'll be picking one of these and we'll go through this as I go through the play. Then for our presence, how much energy we start on the turn, how many cards we can play on our turn. We've got innate power showing that it's gonna be a fast speed. We can target any spirit. And depending on the Symbols on a card we play, we can do different abilities. So once per turn, target spirit may repeat one power card with energy cost of one or less. Then it gets upgraded instead. Energy, energy is three or less, or energy is six or less. Then we have our special rules, Earth's Vitality. Defend three in every land where you have a sacred site, which is having two of these on the same location. So to finish this, we are gonna cover up all of our spaces except the furthest one to the left. And these tokens will be used during the game so we can remember our powers. So this shows that we've got a defense going on somewhere or we are affecting the invaders in a certain space. We'll get our four starting cards. These are gonna go in our hands. So we've got a year of perfect stillness. So you can see the cost up here, what resources it provides for our innate powers, speed, whether it's fast or slow, the range from any spot where we have presence and the targeted land we can go after. So we can play this card, range from one of any place where we have presence and target any land. And so this one has to be a place where we have a sacred site within one, and that land has to have a Dahan in it. And at this point, you would probably want to shuffle your major and minor powers. Unless you are playing with the power progression card. So vital strength, the fear during setup, set aside the power cards below. So we'll go find these. And as we would gain power cards, instead of drawing four of these and choosing one to keep and discarding the others, we are just gonna take the top card from this list. So I've gathered those up. So I've got Rouse the Trees and Stones, Call to Migrate, Poison Land, Devouring Ants, Vigor of the Breaking Dawn, Ferocious Growth, and Savage Maw Beasts. So that's the order we will collect those cards in. All right, so the last part of setup is we need to explore one time to put some more invaders on the board. So in the wetlands, any place that either has a town or city or is adjacent to a town or city with that land type is gonna get some explorers. And that will move in to be the build spot for the next round. So we are now set up. So each turn, we're gonna go through each of these phases, starting with the spirit phase. So we're gonna have growth, gain energy, choose and pay for powers. So our options for growth, Claim all the cards we've already played in a discard pile. Uh, also, we get to place a presence, and it has to be within two spaces of an area on the board where we already have presence. Or we gain a power card, add a presence in a place where we have presence. And lastly, add a presence within one of a space where we have presence and gain two money. And I'm just gonna use this to mark where I'm going. We can choose from the leftmost spot in any of these rows. I'm gonna get my card ability up and we'll place that there. Then we also gain two energy. Then for our gain energy, we gain the rightmost spot revealed. So two more energy. 
Then we can choose and pay for powers, but we are at max playing one card. And in hand, we have three powers that cost three each and one that doesn't cost that much. Two fast cards and two slow. And I think what we're gonna do is play this. So we'll go ahead, so it's slow, it'll come into play later. We'll go ahead and take a money over there to show that that's what we're doing. And I'll be targeting that land there eventually. So we've done the growth energy and choose and pay for powers. Now we do fast powers, which we are not gonna have any. So for the invader phase, blight island effects. So basically our blight island effect is if we don't have any blight there, we've lost the game. If we were using these tokens and it flipped over, we'd have different things going on. So for this game, Blight Island Effect will not be happening. Fear Effects, if we had any cards down here, we'd reveal them. Ravage Effects, first round, we get to skip that phase. So go on to building. So areas of this land type that either has a town or city in it or is adjacent to a town or city is going to Build, I'm sorry. So areas with that that has anything in it is going to build. Got ahead of myself there. So if they are equal towns and buildings, a town is gonna pop up, so there's zero. And if we had more towns than cities, like if it were to build there again, then a city would come into place. So that is the build phase. Exploration we've done, so off into the jungle. This is what I was getting ahead of myself on before. That land type adjacent to any of our towns and cities or with it is going to get some explorers. Then we're going to advance these cards one spot over. Then we do our slow powers. So we can gather up to two Explorers, and then we can gather up to two huts. So gathering means we pick a location and bring things towards us. And I think we're gonna bring these guys over. And one hut. And then we go to time passes. So we're, we're gonna put my discard pile here. If we had any of our tokens on the board, we'd bring them back. And continue doing this till we either get our win condition or the invaders become permanent residents and I get all my fast food chains on the table. All right, so next turn, I'm gonna go here, gaining a power card, which is just gonna take the top one off the list. So it's a slow one, target land, we cannot have a blight, two damage and push someone out of our spot. I'm gonna use this. It has to go in a place where we have presence. I'm gonna sneak that in there. So now we can play up to two cards. We'll gain two energy. I am going to play these, so costing three and one. This one is fast, it's gonna cost three. So one, two, three. And one, so paid for cards. So fast effects, within one of where we have a sacred site. So our sacred sites currently here and here automatically defend three every turn. I guess I should get into damage. Each of these guys do one damage and has one health. All over towns, deal two damage and have two health. Inner cities three damage and three health. So what I'm doing here is picking this spot so I can remove a blight, goes to our track, and defend four. So we're gonna be defending seven here in this area. So that card is played. Then for the invader phase, no blight, no fear, ravage. So in the wetlands, they're fighting. So up here, we've got one, two, three damage coming in. There's no defense. So anytime they do two or more damage to a location, 
it's going to add blight. If blight was already there, it would add more blight and then go to an adjacent spot. And whenever blight gets in a spot where we have presence, we lose one of our presence tokens. So here, attacking for one, two, three, four, five, but we are defending one, two, three, and up to seven. So no damage. Then any surviving Dahan strike back for two points each. So we're doing two, four, six damage back. So one, two, three, four, and five. And since we destroyed one of those, we create a fear. So that was ravaging. Now we're building in the jungle. Both our jungle spaces are clear. So then we go to explore and they're going to the sands. So this spot is going to hurt. Advance our cards, then slow. So about damage, these have three health. If we do two damage to it, at the end of the round, it's gonna reset. So we might as well do two damage to an area where we can kill something. And that area has blight, so we can't target that. So we'll do two damage here, creating a fear, and there's nobody to push around in that spot. Then for cleanup, I think I'm going to reclaim all my cards this time, bring those back to my hand. So we can add a presence within two. I want to start generating some more money. I think we'll go up here. Gain three money. Now our cards. We'll bring these out. Vader skip all actions and target land. And two damage and push. So this one's fast and slow. So three and one, so they're paid for. So we're gonna make it, nothing happens in that land this turn. In the invader phase, ravaging, nothing's going on there. Building, nothing happens there. We get a small town. Exploration. All right, so that symbol, we're in level two. That's trigger if we use Let's see, adversary cards, which I'm not using in the base game, but it's just gonna do additional things to make the game even harder, but it's probably gonna be hard enough for me solo mode anyway. So basically the sands are getting more people. Then everything moves over and we get our slow powers. So in any area within range two or range of one where we have two of our presence tokens that doesn't have that, we can do two damage at push. So we will target this area, two damage, brings down a fear and we'll push one of these guys over. And then our cleanup. And next turn. I need some money, unfortunately. And I'll place that over here. Get two money, get four money. Play up to two cards. We will play these two again. So another fast and slow. So three and one. Fast power is remove a blight and defend a four. Still no fear, ravaging. Fighting here for one, two, three, four, and five. So we're defending four, so nothing else is gonna happen. Fighting here for one, which tips this over, but it still gets to fight back for two. Then we're building. and exploring in the wetlands. Answer cards. 
And like I said, I think I've got an issue with him. He's not creating enough fear fast enough, and I think we're just going to lose the time on that. So we're slow power. We are going to see pick this location to gather. Bring those over. Clean up. Just back to full health. And next round. We need to reclaim all our cards. We will let's see. Dangers of that place. It's going to be doing a lot of damage. So we get four money. I think we're going to try this route again. So three and one, skipping in that spot. So it's just ravaging there, so nothing happens. Building. That's a big problem. Then coastal land, so anything next to the waters now getting some friends, except we're skipping everything in that spot. Move everything down and slow powers, two damage and push one. And we can't have a blight in the area where we do that. So we will do the two damage here, which is gonna fill our fear area up. So take a fear card. Yeah, we're going too slow. Put that there. Move these over. Reset. And figure out what we're doing for this next turn. So I think we're going to go over here, gain a power card. Place a presence out. See, do I want more money? Can't afford three cards this turn, so I'll put this one out there, which gets us six money. We can still only play two cards. We are going to play these. So we've got a fast and slow. So there's the six money spent. So the fast need to be arranged to where we have presents. Remove a blight. It's coming right back though, and we are defending four, but it's doing seven damage there. All right, invader phase, ravaging. Here we're defending for three. It's doing four damage, one damage breaks through. We are fighting back with six, so we're wiping this out. Oh wait, before that happens, forgot. We have a fear card. So we are on terror level one. Each player removes one explorer from a coastal land. So we'll get rid of that. Now we go back to the fight. So it did one damage to us. Took care of a town. Over here, it's doing a whole lot of damage. So a blight comes back. Build on our coastal areas. And exploration in the jungle. Advance our cards. Slow. So two damage. Place has to have a hut. That generates a fear. And we did trigger this down here, but we don't have any cards with the cost of one to use again. So time passes, and we've got to get all our cards back. 
We're going to put this out on the board. So it's fighting in these two areas and building in those two. I think we'll place there. Get her six money. That thing's fully healed. We're going to play these, so spending seven. Got two fast powers. Vader, skip all actions and target land. We're not letting anything happen up there. Then here, move a blind if there was one and defending four, so we'll be defending seven there. And we have one yellow. So once it's turned, Target Spear may repeat one power card with energy cost of one or less, so we get to use this one twice. And that's when the slow comes around. So Blight, Fear, Ravage, not doing anything there. There it's swinging for five, we're defending seven. We strike back with four damage, so one, two, three, and four. That brings two Fear down, which triggers a Fear card. So ravaging done, building, not doing anything there. Get a small town. Then explore. All right, now it's doubling up. So in the jungle, not doing anything there. And the wetlands. And moving. We need to get moving, that's for sure. All right, slow stuff. All right, can't have a Blight in it. Two damage and push one. So we are going to do two damage. Push one, then we get to use this card twice. Two damage, push one. Time is going to pass. Next turn, we're coming in the same spot. We'll place there. Get our cards back. Seven money. All right, this time we're gonna go with these three cards. We've got one fast, Invader skip all their actions. And this is gonna cost us seven. Um, we don't want anything going on over here. So that card is spent. We've got two yellows, three mountains, and two greens. So we can use one of our cards of cost three or less twice. We're going to use that one. All right, fear effect. We're defend three in all coastal lands. All right, so we're going to be six in those areas. So ravaging in the jungles, nothing happens. We don't fight back. Building in the jungles and the wetlands. And that one's not doing anything. Then exploration in the sands. Wetlands still not doing anything. Move these down. Rituals of destruction. Need a hut. And with one of where we have a double site, which we have all over the place, we're choosing this. Two damage, if it has at least three huts, it's plus three damage, so we're doing five and causing two fear. So five damage, take out that, causes a fear. Then three more, then two more fear. Now this comes down, goes back up, gets us our card, 
and the additional fear comes back down. Then we need huts wherever we do that, which unfortunately we don't have them in the right spot. So I wasted doing it all here just to create two more fear. And this one does two damage and pushes. So one more fear. Oh yes, yeah, so now we can win the game if we have no buildings on the board. And pushing up there. Time passes. Next round. We're staying here the rest of the game, I do believe. Except now we can play four cards. Eventually we're gonna have to deal with that and I think I need presence in there to do it. Seven money. I think we're gonna go with these. So we've got a fast and two slow and two yellow, two mountains. Hmm. We'll go with these. We can go up to four cards. I want to get to that second spot there. So that's going to take all eight of our money. Let's see, our fast is just this one. Well, do I need to use all eight? Yeah, I need the other green. So we're going to choose to use that card twice. And nothing's going to happen in that spot. All right, fear effects. We got two things going on and we're in level two. Each player removes two explorers or one Town from a land with a Dahan. So we need a hut, so we'll take it from that spot. Then the next one, defend two in all lands with presence. Each spirit gains an energy per or double area that have lands with invaders. So that's gonna be one, two, three money. And we're defending two along with our defend three. All right, so ravaging in the jungle, we're defending five there. Nothing happening there, nothing happens there. We defend here and kill back. Now we're building in the sands and wetlands. Nothing's going on there or there. Ooh. We just got a couple more turns left, not going well. All right, these guys are coming in the mountains and wetlands, or at least one of them. Our slow powers. We're gonna gather up to three huts. We're gonna choose this place. So one, two, and three. Guess I didn't need to pick this spot twice. Should have thought that out better. Gonna do a mulligan on that since I wasn't thinking it through. I'm gonna say we're doing this one twice. That's allowed when you're new. So gather up to three in this spot and then push up to three. I'm gonna push them all up here. Then we're going to target this land to deal five damage and create two fear. So one, two, three, four, five, that's going to create three fear. 
plus the two, so this comes down. And one stays. Then we're gonna do that again in the same spot. Creates two fear. Then we just need a land that doesn't have blight to deal two damage and push. So we'll blow that up for one, which is gonna reset. Then we'll push this guy over. That's gonna end that, time passes. So our win condition now is we don't have any of those in play, which we don't. So unless I made any mistakes along the way, that's a victory for the vital strength of the earth. And we only had two more turns coming, but I feel like with him, the main thing is getting, he's slow getting built up, and once he does, you just keep recycling his cards. And I think that's the way he gets played. So my initial impressions, I've played this a couple times multiplayer. This is my first solo play. All I can say is my head hurts. This is a big puzzle, lots of thinking type of game. Typically not the type of thing I would play solo, but I've had fun with it multiplayer. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer this solo multiplayer or both. And as always, hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.